you only get one or two a year, but when you hit, you're likely got a superstar in your hands. I am, of course, talking about international amateurs, and today we are going to be going over how you should be going about them. So the first thing I'm going to say is I have the hard cap disabled for this. In my opinion, it's kind of stupid the way that they have it set up this year with a soft cap, so I highly recommend that you disable it by default. So generally speaking, it's not worth it to go after several smaller players, primarily because their money is going to be driven way up. So you're probably not even going to be able to sign them for less than an actual good player. And secondly, because uh, there is some extremely high level talent available in international amateur signing periods, and I highly recommend that you go after those. So uh, generally, the way I like to identify the top players is sorting by certain potentials. So I'll sort by contact potential, for example, power potential, I. I'll also check out who the top fielders are, but generally, because there aren't many pitchers, I'm going to stick to the batting rings. Now, there are occasionally going to be some pitchers who are worth signing, but the international amateur period is very batter heavy, and this is likely where you're going to see a vast majority of your players. So while these same principles will apply when you have a rare high quality pitcher, we're going to be focusing on batters because, well, that's the primary thing. And also I don't have any good pitchers in this draft. So we're going to sort by contact potential since that'll encompass power and avoid K's as well, and should give you a general idea of who the best hitters are. So we see here, the first guy is Juan Prieto. He's the only 70 grade contact player in the draft. He's got exceptional batting ratings across the board, and this is something else I'm going to make very big note of because it's extremely important, especially for players this young. He's got a really good personality, especially that high work ethic. I love to see high work ethic and intelligence are going to be critical for getting players to develop up to their maximum potential. Those two are going to be the most important things in a personality to get a guy to develop fully. Also notable is he, while he's not necessarily a great defender, he can play third base adequately. So he's either going to stick at third base or first base. He can probably actually move to right field as well in a pinch, although I wouldn't be a huge fan of that. He's a switch hitter as well, which is great because it will allow him to have platoon advantage versus both sides of the plate. And hopefully he will develop pretty even splits, which will make him an absolutely outstanding hitter all around. This guy I could see being an absolute star pretty much like Jose Ramirez, and he's probably going to be a target of ours for his ability to play a position that is not going to be universally playable, like first base. His absolutely outstanding bat and his great personality. Now we're going to see who else we've got here. Omar Fernandez. This guy's a really good hitter as well. Eyes a little low. Avoid K's isn't great, but he's got great power and pretty solid contact as well. Personality is also really good for this guy, but you're going to notice that he can... Oh, okay, that's interesting. He's got enough outfield range that I could see him hypothetically playing left field competently, and that's actually going to be critical to his value. This is also why it's really important to go under the ratings tab. It's going to give you an idea of who might be able to move outside of their designated uh, place. And this is seriously big to his value because being able to play left field half decently is much better value than being able to play first base, which is something anybody can do. Now, still, those two positions aren't too valuable on the defensive spectrum, so I'm not likely going to value him that highly. But if we end up having spare money, he could certainly be on our board. All right, next we got Andres Gonzalez. And right off the bat, this is a guy I'm absolutely in love with. He looks a lot like Pieto. Uh, just a little bit worse offensively, maybe. The contact's a little lower but about the same overall. But even more importantly, he's a leader, which is going to be valuable as a good personality trait as well. We see that he's got infield ratings in addition to his outfield ratings. He's not going to be great in the infield, in my opinion. Probably going to be limited to first base without some very unexpected TCRs. Uh, but he does have outstanding outfield defense. This is a guy who can play either corner really well and with perhaps a little bit of development can maybe sneak into center field. But I'm pretty happy with that defense. That's going to give him additional value on top of his pretty solid hitting. So we're going to say he's a right fielder with some pretty darn good potential. So maybe not as valuable as a hitter as Prieto. But overall, I'd say he's similar. And we certainly are going to have our eyes very strongly on both of those guys. Esteban Sanchez. 
that terrible personality, leader, work ethic, and intelligence all low, that's an immediate turnoff for me. I'm almost never going to sign, unless they are literally miles better in terms of their talent than everybody else, anybody with this kind of personality. It's just going to really wreck their possibilities of becoming their full potential. So we're going to immediately move on to the next guy. Wilfredo Sanchez. Solid hitting. He's got good enough defense, in my opinion, to be a second baseman. A pretty solid second baseman at that, which is certainly interesting. He could probably play left field in a pinch, although I wouldn't count on it. I'm not in love with him. He's all right. The offense just really doesn't make him that much of a standout. He could be an everyday second baseman, but he's not a star. We got Jorge G Godinez. I don't think that defense is good enough for third base. He has outfield ratings. They aren't very good either. Uh, the hitting, in my opinion, not that great. He's going to really have to lean on hitting for a lot of power. And he'll be solid, but he's not a guy I'm all that interested in. All right, we're on to Josh Goldsmith, another second base, but he's got terrible defense, actually. His hitting is even worse. I'm not interested at all in him. Alexis Gomez, decent hitting. He's a bird, but... He's a bird who can do everything pretty well. He's just highlighted by his power. He's a first baseman as well. He's okay. I'm not really a huge fan of him here either. Again, that defensive value is big, and he doesn't have it. Frank Gomez looks very similar to Alexis uh, Gomez. Huh, same last name. That's ironic. The big difference for me, though, work ethic and outfield defense. He's got 65 range, which is, again, borderline center fielder quality. He's actually got good enough infield defense to be a potential second baseman as well, and he can absolutely play left field very well or right field competently. So this is a guy I would be very interested in signing over perhaps better hitters, although, again, he is a little bit old. He's a switch hitter, though. That's another thing that gives him value, but I am a little bit wary of the fact that he's 18 and not nearly as developed as I'd like to see. Manny Gutierrez, another... Mediocre hitter, terrible fielder, terrible personality. Pass. Kozo Hama, not a bad hitter, but bad defense. And not nearly as good as some of the other options we've got, so I'm going to pass on him as well. Edgar Juarez, not a good defensive catcher. Terrible personality. The hitting is pretty good, but he's going to have to be a first baseman and a below average defensive first baseman or a terrible catcher. I don't like either of those things, so I'm going to pass on him. Luis Juarez, terrible personality, mediocre hitter, first baseman, pass. Ricky Linares, okay, this guy has solid defense in the outfield. He's got a uh, work ethic, which is nice. He has some infield ratings. He could certainly be a decent first baseman, and the hitting is solid. This is a guy I'm absolutely interested in as well. Cesar Martir, eh, defense is mediocre, hitting is mediocre. Manny Metal. He's actually got some pretty solid defense and some outfield, not good outfield defense, but it's there. But I'm still not interested in him because he's just not a good enough hitter. Okay, Victor Medina. He's got work ethic. The intelligence is low. That's not great, but the hitting is solid. The defense is solid. I'm not super interested in him, but he's better than some of the other guys we've seen. Dave Mejia. Decent bat. Mediocre defense. Terrible personality. And he is limited to first base. Okay, Marco Pou... Uh, Polito, here's a guy who can play third base pretty darn well. He's got some outfield ratings as well, and those are also pretty darn good. He can be a right fielder or left fielder at about average uh, point, and same for third base, which is really valuable. The bat is really solid. He's going to be an OPS beast with the power in the eye. The contacts are not terrible. He's still going to have a decent BABIP, and the avoid K's being high is nice as well. This is a guy I'm really liking. All right, Angel Quint, another mediocre hitter. He does have outfield ratings. I'm not thrilled with the third base defense. I'm not thrilled with the outfield defense. We can move on. Ivan Rios, again, that good personality, that good defense, that gives him value. So he's a lot more valuable than some of the better hitters we've seen. Uh, he could hypothetically play third base as well with that arm and range, but I wouldn't count on it. Sal Rivera, eh, he's just not very good all around. Andres Rodriguez, another mediocre hitter and not a great fielder either. And Hector Trujillo, the power is very good. The personality is solid. The defense is eh. But outside of that power, he's not going to be very good. And I think he's just okay. So let's make a quick short list of all the players that we saw who are good. Juan Prieto. 
he was very good. Andres Gonzalez, awesome. Love him. Uh, not Esteban Sanchez. I think Frank Gomez, we decided, was pretty good. Ricky Linares, that guy is pretty darn good. So these guys are going to be our top priorities to sign. These are the players that we think are capable of making a legitimate and sizable impact on an organization at some point in their careers. Um, I'm actually going to take Victor Medina off the shortlist. He's okay, but he's not quite on par with the other guys. So now we're going to filter by our shortlist and talk about the guys one more time that we did shortlist and the traits that make them so desirable. Here we go. Is shortlisted. Okay. So we got Juan Prieto. The bat is excellent. He's capable of playing third base. So the defensive value is decent. The personality is awesome. He's likely to reach his potential. He's valuable. He's a switch hitter. He's going to have value as a hitter to both sides of the plate, which is awesome. Andres Gonzalez, great bat, great defense, solid personality. All around just a great player. Frank Gomez, he's a decent hitter. Great defense, relatively speaking. Once again, that work ethic is going to be big in his development. He's a little old, which scares me, but he's also a switch hitter. That adds value to his bat. Ricky Linares, another well-rounded, solid hitting player. Solid outfield defense, decent personality, and the infield defense, if he has to move to first base, is actually pretty good as well. And Marco Polito, actually a decent to plus defender at third base. Not going to win any gold gloves, but the fact that he's capable of being more than just a below average third baseman is great. The bat is outstanding. He's 15, which means that his hypothetical potential is absolutely through the roof. He's versatile. He's capable of playing the outfield in either corner if we really need to move him out of third base. Awesome player. So of these guys, I would say my favorite is obviously Juan Prieto. I just, it's honestly not uh, that much higher than Andres Gonzalez. I think these guys are both awesome. Prieto, for me, is probably going to be a first baseman or long term, but he's capable of standing in at right field or third base and could be a franchise third base, but if you absolutely need to have him there. I love the personality. The batting profile is really what sells me, though. He's just such a good hitter. He stands out from the rest of the class, even though we've got some really strong options, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for franchise-altering guys. Prieto is absolutely... The most extreme case, we're offering him a contract immediately. I'll just give him $3 million here. Now, since this is a really stacked class of players, we got a lot of highly talented guys. I'm willing to exceed the cap and not sign anybody next year because it makes more sense to get five guys who are extremely talented this year than it does to get one guy who's good this year and one guy who's good next year without exceeding the cap, which would be two players. And we also have no guarantees of what next year's class is going to look like, while we have guarantees that we have some really good players here. So Andres Gonzalez, again, that outstanding defense. This is huge because a player, I mean, you could find a great hitter like some of those first basemen we saw, and just, that's really easy. You could find great low defensive value hitters very easily, but guys who are great defensive value and great offensive value are extremely rare. So Andres Gonzalez, who's going to provide that extra uh, value in either right field or left field, or possibly even play center field with a much better bat than comparable players, he's huge. So we absolutely have got to get him signed. We'll give him those $3 million. Absolutely worth it. We're already over the cap, but absolutely, absolutely worth it. My next favorite player is easily Polito. And honestly, he's not too far behind Gonzalez and Prieto. Unlike Prieto, he's actually a solid third baseman, and he's versatile enough to play either corner outfield spot pretty well as well. That's really good. The fact that you could stick him in three positions that are higher up on the defensive spectrum and be happy about it is huge. He's also got by far the best eye in his class, great power and decent contact skills as well. He's younger than the rest of the competition, which means his uh, overall value is or his potential peak is even higher. His injury proneness is durable, which means he's less likely to suffer due to injuries. And I'm overall really confident in his hypothetical peak. He's more expensive than everyone else, but absolutely worth that extra money. 
Now, Linares and Gomez, we don't have enough money for both at this point, so we're going to have to choose between them, and that is going to go to Gomez. So the big reasons why are he is a switch hitter, and he has better defense. Also, that work ethic is big to me as well. Uh, Linares, of course, has it as well, but if we do a side-by-side -side comparison here, you're going to see that Gomez is a very similar uh, hitter overall slightly better on that home run power. And that's the differentiating factor between their hitting abilities. And then you go to the defense and he is slightly better on the range and actually the air and arm as well. He also has the versatility to play second base mediocrely if he absolutely needs to. So to me, Gomez is just marginally better. I also like that he's a switch hitter. That gives me extra confidence in him. And with that, we have decided who we are signing in this international amateur class. So the big factors, once again, are the absolute outstanding bats, the value on defense, the personality, that one is huge, and, of course, the overall capabilities of the player. We've got a several here who I think are absolutely generational or close to generational level talents, and I'm very thrilled with them. So keep in mind those three things. I don't know if I counted correctly, but uh, they will let you develop these highly talented stars. And soon you will have a line of these guys on your team making a big impact on your offense and your defense. I hope this was helpful to everybody and I'll see you guys soon.